call the meeting to order. Uh, first on the agenda are Tom and Claire Wallace. We'll skip over them in case they show up later. Yeah. Um, is Brett coming in? Yep. Okay. Well, then we'll skip. Is the I other people so coming in? They're all about 715, 730. All right. So. Well, then we'll go to public forum. Maybe we'll get Brian out early. I'm assuming <laughs> that's what he's here for. Yep. Yeah. Public for forum, opportunity for citizens who are not on the agenda to briefly share comments and concerns with the board. Brian. Um, back to the dogs again. Um, I just left the house and give me a minute here because this is new technology to me. But Hopefully you haven't got one on there that'll be embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> you said new technology. Yeah, yeah. Smart yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> yeah, I'll here. I had it here Meanwhile, oh, while they're searching, have you got anything, Jimmy? Thanks to all the veterans for their service, past and present. And uh, happy birthday to George Smith last Friday. He was 91. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Time flies when you're having fun, huh? Yeah. Sure does. Okay, here we go. You can come up here, Brian. This was recorded on my porch. Just now? Just now. And that's been going on all weekend in the past week. I have all that berm has done is make a place for the dogs to get up on and bark even louder. And if the town crystal thinks I'm paying my taxes to live up there and listen to this bullshit, I have had it. If it happened here in town, this is probably been Oliver's off. I don't know why it's taken so long for me to get something done. But I'm not going to stand for it anymore. I'm done with it. I did get a note from Jen that you had called on 519, around 10 a.m., and that the dark dogs had been marking from 9 to 2. And, uh, you know, I'm just... I'm not sure what what the select board's options are. They're running... Running out does he have a kennel permit? He doesn't need one. I researched it. He Why does he need one? He has three, two other people with dogs there. I can't quote you off the top of my head, but you know I came back and looked to see if I could. Because Wendell Mason, I found out the person. Remember I said yes. I couldn't remember who it was. Um, so I did find out. Because I thought that might be the clincher, the fact that it was three. But it basically had to do, the kennel permit was more, I think, breeding and, and selling of the dogs. But the ordinance is basically it says what the select board can do is is and of course they're all they're registered they have shots they've proven all that that's all here at the town they can be chained which they are confined which they are muzzled which they're not but they tried the, obviously the, the sonar and the bark collars and they can um, well you order just them to destroyed that. and or make them. And give them away, I, or you know, send them to a main society. I mean, those are that's the the lots. Those are the options. That's it. That's what's left. Well, you just listen to that. Does that sound like those similar things are working? No. Well, I remember when uh, Peeker and Pete Boobier and I went up, they had um, like we and I talked about, and then maybe Jen. They had the smaller. They had a sonar up, but it wasn't. It was only like at a certain area and it wasn't working as well because what was happening was every time a big vehicle went by it It shook it and so then the dogs were being zapped or, or whatever happens to them whenever when they weren't barking And then when we went up They were fine. I mean there was big trucks going by there was cars going by they barked when Peter pulled in Peter and I got there first and they barked when we got there and then they barked and we got there and then that was it we were standing there 
It was Peter, Peter, myself, Todd, Alex, and his wife, and Alicia, Scott. and Scott, and they didn't bark. They didn't bark. Like big GMP trucks, like I thought for sure they would go crazy when they saw the big trucks they were headed past your house. Nothing. There's and no one standing out there just now when they were barking. They do it all the time. Yeah. I've been by there three times a week to, <clears throat> to check it out. They haven't been barking at all. And other neighbors have not been complaining about it. What's going on? They have dogs. They don't care. Yeah, I mean, I went. He's he's. I'm mean, gonna right. I went to the neighbors, and the slicers didn't care. Said it didn't bother them. They're the next house closer. And then it's Mr. Coleman, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't think I'm uh, telling you the truth, why don't you come up and live in my house for a month, and I'll come down and live in yours? How's that? Because that's how pissed I am about it. Right. I'm done being relaxed. We're going to do something about it soon. Good. How many? Because this is bullshit. He has gotten. He had gotten rid of a couple because he called. How many said, has he got of his own? I'd have to go pull a dog. Licenses. Just roughly. Does he get does 19 he dogs up there? How many are his? Probably. I think that. Well, what did Miss? Uh, what did the uh, free guards have? What four? Four. Four. Four, and then um, the other guy has nine, and Todd has the rest. There you go. I mean, could we at least eliminate to say, uh, <coughs> you're only going to have your dogs on your property, to say, you know, less mouths on the bus, quiet the bus down. I don't know if you can. Yes. I'd have to reread the dog. I think that's. I don't think, think it's a civil matter. I mean, yeah, I don't think we can dog or we can do that. But right. I don't think it's in the ordinance. You can order the hey, you, you know, aside, and, and I think that it would probably turn into a, a big suit, I'm sure, is if you tried to take the dogs. Um, no, I'm not saying take them. No, I don't know no. Send them home. Yeah. Send them to no, their owners. The there, Send them to their owners. Yeah, and I'm not sure if we can do that because I, or right. if you can do that. Right. We, you, I don't, we, I don't know if that's in the ordinance, uh, the dog ordinance. I don't think it is. It's not in the dog ordinance. Um, I mean, the only thing you could possibly say to, say to the other owners is we're going to make a determination that they all have to go to the pound or I'll have to go homeward bound or whatever, so you better <laughs> take him out of there. I mean, I don't know if we can do that either. I don't know. I if they're not his dogs. I'm going to have to read I mean, the we, ordinance and we might have to get legal advice from the town right. attorney because when it, it's going to, you know, when it, if you're trying to act outside the scope of the ordinance, right. it's going to be a is there matter. Is there anything in the ordinance as far as noise goes? Yeah, sure. They're mm -hmm. nuisance dogs, absolutely. Right. But when that's... And these are the recourses, the things that we've been doing because we've been trying to deal with the nuisance dogs. What's the last recourse that you can do if they're a nuisance dog? The, the ones I determined, just outlined, they can, you know, just like muzzle this, that, order them destroyed. Um, and which I'm sure he'd go to court over because they have thousands of dollars tied right. up in them. Right. And you could order that they were given to the Humane mm -hmm. Society. And then if that doesn't happen, say they, say the select board ordered that. But I almost think that first to do that, they actually have to go in and collect all of them. By read, reading the ordinance, I think you'd have to go in and, and actually take all the dogs and, we and keep them for so many days. Well, we have nowhere to put them, and neither does Homeward Bound. Homeward Bound doesn't have room to take that many of them. We could only take dogs eight. Yeah. Eight. You, yeah, so your other option, if you're not, you know, the, those are the extreme ones, as we talked about, is, is ordering them to be muzzled. Which, Brian, is, this, is there something going on this weekend that's worse than normal? I mean, you said it's been going on all weekend, so is this weekend different than like during the week? Um, other than I had to pump 600 gallons out of my basement because of the, the toilet that was flooded. Mm -hmm. No, nothing other than normal, no. Mm -hmm. So there's no, there was like no parties going on? That no. Cars would be going when I filmed, day. when I just did that recording, mm -hmm. there was nobody up there. There was mm -hmm. nothing there. The dogs were just up on the berm barking their little hearts out. So they put the burn in and then gave them access to the stupid burn? Yeah, yeah because they, they the when we were there, they were, most of them were behind the burn, but there was one or two that came to the top and sat there, but yeah, but they weren't barking. Can we cause them to put a fence at the bottom of the burn so the dogs cannot get up on the At burn? the top of the burn, you probably yeah. could at the top of the burn, so that way they don't, um... Well, if you put it yes. at the bottom, put it at the bottom they can't get up. They the can't burn. get up and bark. Right. At the top. 
I get, you know, you were there. But yeah. they still bark, so regardless nice. if there's a berm there or not, they still bark. Yes, but if there's a berm, the ones down the back that don't the have the berm are still barking. I those, mean, yeah, those are the ones that are supposed to move up to the top once he gets some more of the fill out, and he he's supposed to create a bigger area. area there so that all the dogs can move from down there up there. And then that was the whole thing was they'd be behind this berm. And there'd be a fence on the roadside, so basically there shouldn't be anything that was visible visible to them, causing them to bark. That was the plan that he, I, you know, at one we were there, and that's he all started. fine, but the dogs don't understand that they can just bark at nothing. You know? all right. All right. I mean, I think we're gonna have to ask Kevin. Yeah, and give some legal advice yeah. from Kevin. Recourse. What our options are. I mean, I don't mean you know mean to sound mean enough, but no. this has gone on long mm -hmm. enough. I mean, Jen's mother's up from Florida, and she could hear him barking, you know. And she said, that, you know, that would never be allowed down in Florida. And yeah, said, it's a yeah. quality of life issue for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like dogs. My sister has them. My you know cousins have them. I happen to have cats. You know, they don't bark. That's, that's well, beside the point. Yeah, well, I'll send our the town attorney is Kevin Brennan. I'll call him tomorrow, get him a copy of our dog ordinance, and see what he says. And uh, I have your number, and I can. Go, but it might take him a couple days to get us some legal advice because I, you know I'm just not sure that's the. I mean, to you, but almost. I know he doesn't have a kennel license, he doesn't have a kennel, but... Yeah, because that's what I came Boy. back, because Brian had mentioned it, and I what thought, okay, that's, 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 that's the culture. And 12 them are yours. Right, yeah. yeah. You call that, you're keeping, you're bordering them. But well, it was, they because... had to be for the state of Vermont definition of a kennel, because that's what I came back and looked at after I talked to Brian and, and Jen, and it said that they had to be breeding and, like, selling pup, you know, basically like a kennel like that, like you're going to go mm -hmm. buy a puppy. Right. So he's um, just hosting them. Oh, right. Yeah, but... I, you know, the gentleman that was in here, the other gentleman that was in uh, here that night. Free guard. Yeah, he's got four. He's got four? Yeah, well, I'm not sure who's Mike's and who's Sean's, but, but yeah. Anyway, yeah, and he said, I said, well, why don't you take him at home? He said, I can't, I live in the village. Yeah, because he so, has a couple of, but he already, well, he has two at KTP, and we've actually never got a complaint on him. Right, so what is he going to do with them if we say, you got to get out of them, or yeah, they're going away? And like you said, I'm not sure within the terms of the ordinance if, if you have the authority to do that, right. I, I just don't know. Right. So we'll have to find yeah. out and get some ad legal advice and then yeah. go from there. I know he'd gotten rid of two, and I haven't heard that he's gotten uh, any more, but I have to go check the dog yeah. registration. So yeah, back in, was it early April, late March? Yeah. We ordered these things to put on them. So he put some on some, and then took them off. Because they're not on the dogs. They're, 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 they, when the dogs bark, they apparently make a noise. Noise. That, so it's yeah, they're on yeah. a separate post with a piece of wood, like backs on it. And, and I'm guessing it's probably the vibration of the, of the bark that mm -hmm. makes it go off because they said that the wind was shaking them and setting them off, and the dogs were going nuts. Well, I mean. On the contrary, you said the, the truck's going by and they vibrate and that then they get a shock. They can. I mean, that's and what maybe they had said. But the logic is he, maybe move that away from the road more. Yeah. Well, it's hard and because secure it more. you have to. And we looked at those options. They before. have to have them, you know, I think within, because it's like a cone. When it's a sonar, it's a cone. So where he has it. But, I mean, that didn't happen when we were standing there. So, I, you know, and like I said, the trucks went by and, and we were all standing there talking and going over Did it. Did have them turn on? <laughs> No, that's the question. I, those are Sean's, so I would assume yes. He seems like he's pretty respectful as far as trying to keep them, um, trying to keep them quiet. Well, at your meeting, the last meeting we were at, you said that if these sonar things didn't work, that you'd go to the shock collars, which yep. I don't agree to put one on a dog. Right, and seven. they've had bark if collars that's, on. But he doesn't have. 19, enough, right? He does have 19 collars up there. I don't think so. And he had, he did have them on for a while. I mean, on some of them, the ones that they thought were barking. Yeah, Mr. Freegar yeah. said they had to take them off. They had them on. They had to take them off because they were starting to grow into the Jeez. grow into skin. Mm -hmm. And probably if you don't have them on all of them, if another dog barks, it 
it's gonna set it off on the other yeah. dogs. So yeah. it's not really. And it's once they're trained with them, because my stuff bought bear dogs, and you once they were used to it, you just would leave the collar on them, but not turn it on, because they once they had it on, mm -hmm. they were understood right. what was happening. You just didn't put the battery in it. But um, so I think I think calling the town attorney and sending yeah. him the ordinance is have, the best thing we can do next yeah. to see. He's got to advise us what, what, what our do. options are. Any because idea why he chose a sonar thing instead of an individual dog collar? Because the select board. Is, is he already had the bark collar. He already had bark collar. working. Mm -hmm. And then. He already had bark, bark collar. But not for enough. He only had like right. four or five. Mm -hmm. And these, if you buy the right size, are supposed to cover more dogs than um, just. Yeah. That's why the sonar. It was the cheaper way. And remember, yeah, yeah Josh. It is the cheaper way to go. Back, yeah. Ted, and you were in favor of that. And we were looking. When um, I think he showed you a little thing on his on his phone about it, but that was the hope is it would cover more animals, but it didn't work. Yeah, unless it's not set up right. Yeah, so. I, yeah I wouldn't know. Yeah. I mean, I saw them up, right. so I assume they were. Yeah, working. And they, you know, it may be the reason they shake is because they're not mounted. Really, yeah. The individual dog collars respond to the dog, the individual dog bark. They respond right. to the vibration in the dog's throat and they shock that particular dog. Right. Which is the more expensive of the two, which is why I thought he could start with a less expensive and work his way toward mm -hmm. a, a better solution. Yeah. Brian, is there, do you notice at the, in the evening when, after dark, you know, they well, at feeding time, I understand they bark. That doesn't bother me. But, I but mean, after dark, do they seem to bark less because they can't see as much? It depends on the night. If it's a you know a dry night, they, you might hear them out there more. I mean, it, it yeah. all depends on the night. Because this Yesterday, night was not 9 to 2 in the morning. Right. Yesterday, uh, I was putting the vegetables in the garden, and they it was nonstop barking uh, all day long. They can't see you from there. And no, they no. can't. And it wasn't during feeding time. There wasn't a truck over there. There wasn't, he didn't have company. They were just, and you actually heard Todd holler at the dogs a couple of times to shut him up. So he is aware that they are barking. He does holler at them, but they stop for a few minutes and then go right back at it. So. That's what I was going to um, say. How could that dog drive you crazy? Yeah. If you're in the house. All right, we'll get our ordinance to Kevin and we'll see what our... What options we have. Yeah, what options we have. And I'm sure as soon as Therese finds out, yeah, I agree she'll that. let you know what our options are and then it'll be our next meeting before we can decide what route to go. Okay. Unless unless it's something that we can That's talk to Todd idea. ahead of time and see if he can get initiated. Yeah, I'll see. Once, once I talk to Kevin and he looks at the ordinance, I get some advice, I'll deal with Todd. We'll call him and see, tell him, look, here's the deal. This is what's coming down the pike and see what we can do. Okay. And if he goes up to the more expensive collars, why wouldn't he have the dog owners pay for those collars? Exactly. Well, yeah. he said, right, when I talked to him last, that's how I found out about the gentleman, Wendell, who all of a sudden came up out of the blue. It was when we were talking about costs. And then he said, oh, well, Wendell. And I'm like, what? Wendell Mason. Yeah, so I found out like a couple days after I saw you. I was I asked. Yeah, he actually works with my nephew. Oh, I was like, he, he laughs about it. It's because he mm -hmm. has. Mm -hmm. So he was saying, Todd was yeah. saying he was getting some money from him to help pay for it. Yeah, I was he, like, who is this dude? He works for uh, <coughs> landscaping company in Ferrisburg, and he just laughs about it because my nephew said, you know. So he's what? not a Bristol resident. No. That may be a way. That may no. be. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't believe he is. I okay. don't. Don't hold me to that. I'm not sure. That well, we can find out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So all the dogs are registered in the town of Bristol. Mm -hmm. Yes, because they weren't registered in his name. They're registered in Todd's name. Uh -huh. they, if they're registered in Todd's uh -huh. name and he's not owner, yeah, you can't be doing that. What's with that? Uh -uh, possibly lives in Ferrisburg. All right. Yeah. Can I register your car? Yeah. Right. <laughs> pay for it. Yeah, pay for it. Are you going to register my name? That's right. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Come on up, Brett.
recover from your weekend? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I said in the note that Brett was here, um, so he can speak to the repairs. Um, he ended up not getting an uh, estimate hasn't come yet from KME, uh -huh. and he texted me today, and I said, well, you might as well come anyway, since I didn't know the status of the equipment, and uh, you weren't going to meet again until June 12th. Do you have a guess? I don't even want to guess, Ted. Huh. I think that would be very unfair. Okay, the tank, the the tank, tank, what yeah. needs to be done? Yeah. So, okay. so uh, okay. engine one, our frontline engine, is in service. Um, needs on that particular vehicle at this time. Um, the gas tank, fuel, fuel tank, mm -hmm. has a leak, um, but it needs to be inspected mm -hmm. to see what can it can the existing uh, tank be repaired or does it need to be replaced? And in order to do that, the gasoline must be siphoned out of the tank. Um, the uh, ground lights, or not the ground lights, the uh, intersector lights, which we've had problems with off and on for years, are currently out of service and. We are no longer capable of repairing those, and they need to be, they're important for emergency response, so they provide us uh, with emergency lights. Uh, and you won't get it inspected without them working? And we won't get it inspected without it working. <clears throat> we also have an intake valve that has been damaged on the rear of the truck. Um, and part of the discussion is, do we repair, replace this intake valve that was replaced several years ago due to damage it received at that time, most likely due to what they call the water hammer effect, or do we look at a different route which is uh, doing, away, doing away with it and capping it and just taking in water um, at the pump panel so it can be gated. Am I correct in saying that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Looking at what my operators <laughs> are. So. Or and, gated in the rear. Right. Or and we I, could put an external <clears throat> gate on the rear yeah. like we have on yeah. the side panel. So we have a couple different options. Mm -hmm. And then uh, also on the panel itself, there are a couple of gauges, uh, the pressure gauges that are uh, out of service, meaning they're not reading correctly at this time and they need to be replaced. And to answer your question again, Ted, I really, I couldn't even take a guess. Yeah, okay. So. I, can, I can take a stab because, and it's not, it, that's a custom tank on that, I believe. And I think tank for my dump truck was 1800 bucks and that's not a custom tank. Yeah. So somebody would have to make it from scratch. Yeah, or they they probably have them, but it's yeah. not. Mm -hmm. This is the fuel tank. Yes. Yeah, the fuel tank. Because That's it's just the fuel tank. That's not yeah. talking about the Because it's, yeah, in right. yeah. it's in between the frame. You know, it's not like it, it can't be out on yeah. the side of the frame rail, right, so it's right, stuffed right. up in between, so it has to be a certain size to fit. And so the engine one, um, each year for the past at least five or six years, we always over um, spend that line on that truck. I mean, each year we um, increase it for apparent reasons, but we overspend it each year because the cost of maintenance continues to go up and up. You know, these unforeseen things, they just come up. Right. You know, they're kind of out of our control. You can't do anything about it. We can only expect to have the vehicle inspected, you know, change the oil, do the annual pump tests, etc. cetera. Right. Um, but with that being said, I guess this is where I'm gonna yeah. look to Therese Obviously, we know this is going to cost something in the next few weeks, and uh, looking at possible um, funding sources, yeah. opposed to going to the fire department's capital equipment fund, I understand there may be yeah. some funds available in the fire department's <coughs> operating budget to right. pay for these expenses. So I have a question, just out of curiosity. So it, it, at the end of April, it's the 97, right? Yes, it is. Okay, so we budget 2200 but we already spent like $5,000. So you've already had problems or extra expenses we've with put, this yeah. vehicle. Tires this tires this year. New tires, that's right. Okay, I remember yeah. people we were talking about that. Yeah, and one was damaged. And we, yeah, we had to replace one that one was cost. You know, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, so what happened was there was just a mistake in the, um, in the amortization schedule that we were given. So we budgeted obviously to make a full bond payment this year and because on that truck or on, on, on that? the facility itself oh, okay. on the facility and because there was a mistake in the amortization schedule um we so we budgeted for a payment and now we don't actually need to make that payment until later but however in the next budget cycle however we're obviously going to make a payment we're going to make a principal payment mm -hmm. um so what what I would I know that obviously he's under on um, 
you know, propane, gas, oil, electric. So I don't know what you want to do as far as just let him, obviously we can't keep going to the capital fund because you budgeted out for vehicles and, and things with a, with a certain amount of money. So I'm curious if you want to just, my advice would be just let him overspend the line. And to do that, I could, we could reduce the principal payment to the um, facility bond by the difference. By the difference. Put them on the budget. Mm -hmm. Or we could also hold off and wait because until the end of June, since there is no bond payment due, then it's kind of see how his entire budget sugars out. And then the more we can send to the bond payment, obviously, the better off we would be. So we could kind of wait till the end of June and see. He's obviously going to overspend this line. We know he's going to underspend a couple other lines. So we could just kind of wait. And then as the last AP of this fiscal year, cut a check to the bank for the um for the you know for the for our principal payment. So can I ask something on the on the facility bond payment you had budgeted hundred and seventy seven thousand. Yep. But you've only made a twenty six thousand dollars. Because they, they had us do right. we assumed we were gonna be doing an interest and a interest principal payment mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the schedule that's how we budgeted off the schedule, but it was just a mistake in the schedule. So we're only making interest only payments. Right, this no, just this it just happened to run yeah just this year. This year. So right. um obviously we're still gonna send the money for principal but mm -hmm. Yeah, well we send the mm -hmm. money for principal will make a big difference on the other end of that. Absolutely, right. absolutely. Um, the one thing that we we know there's going to be money in that power line. Yep. Um, but we promised that that money would go right. back to the undesignated fund um, balance. So right. I don't that whatever is extra there, I don't think we can. Right. I mean. That makes sense. No, exactly I think that's what we. When there was questions about that. Power. Mm -hmm. That's where we said that extra money was going. So I'm not comfortable taking that and using right. that. Um, yeah. So we could wait and just beside the, because I know we budgeted electric and the other one I think mm -hmm. was propane. Yeah. What we could do is see, still see where his budget stands at the end of June and not taking those two lines into consideration. Um, see where his budget actually stands and how much would have to come out of. Um, you know, out of the bond payment. Or I just take it out of the, just spend it and take it out of the undesignated, here you want one? Undesignated fund balance. It's actually looking pretty sweet with 84% of the yeah. year gone by. And that was the end of April, so she's certainly that made, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, she's certainly made right. some, um, yeah, I we've that. paid bills obviously mm -hmm. since then, so. But I would like to, I mean, it's not going to hurt if we pay more than towards the principal. Right, no, absolutely. No. I'm just saying, yeah, I'm just trying to fig find a way to come up with the money versus yeah. going back to tap the um, capital yeah, fund for some no. with their capital no. fund. No, I, you know, so, and this is, I think, too, a future kind of thing. Right. I, I think in future budgets, because mm -hmm. the new plan is to hold apparatus for 25 years, mm -hmm. right? Correct then we're just going to have to amp up our budgeting for yeah. repairs. Brett, do you remember, did we raise that amount in the new in July 1st budget? For, for engine one? Yeah. Yes, yeah. we did. Yeah. What did we raise it to? I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah. But I mean, I you know, I can go to a town report and tell if you. you add up, I mean, he's still 600 to the good to the hose rail. He's 400 to 300 to the good to the engine tanker. I'm going 30 odd days here. Left. But just remember, that was the end of April. Yeah, that was April. Oh, okay. We, we, For you, I don't know if there's anything else in here. You know, he's almost a thousand dollars the heavy rescue, and two hundred dollars, yeah. a little under two hundred dollars. So, and the brush truck, he's got almost twelve hundred extra. Yeah, I'd almost like to wait to see where he's at, where he's at. Like, I mean, you add up all of his like trucks, that. I think, and all of his maintenance, I think. Yeah, one but truck sold. But that's what I'm saying. See where he's at at the end of June. Mm -hmm. That way, you don't have to take it out of anything else. You know, if we can make it we'll up with bill. what, yeah, we'll right, whatever the we've got. The yeah. Can we encumber Peter. this money? No. No. We cannot encumber. No, I, you know, I looked at that too. No, they won't let us. But so from 2200, we went to 2550. So not a big increase. But I think that, you know, we we'll probably can come close to getting it out of his budget, depending. I mean, I haven't seen a current budget status report, obviously, until Peter will close the books tomorrow. I, I think that, that the probably the need to go is, is, is if, it's, if it's scheduled to be down there, have the work done, and then, you know, we'll have, I think we have 30 days to pay them. That'll be the end of June. We'll know right. where we stand by then. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure he could authorize the work. Mm -hmm. 
it's and it's obviously work. KME. Yeah. KME is going to do all the work, yeah. right? I don't have a choice. Yeah, there is no but choice. in fairness to the select board and to the taxpayers, and I want to be fiscally responsible, you don't just feel comfortable spending money without at least coming before you for the asking. The fire engine doesn't work. Um, that doesn't. That's more of a problem. That's more of a problem. Really well. Yeah. 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 And it's all, it all goes to KME, right? KME maybe, does the work. Yeah. Maybe with any luck, you, you know, if the tank's got a small rub on it, it's it's not leaking a great deal, but it it's is seeping. It's, actually it's seeping. It's not even dripping yet. Right. <laughs> they might be able to epoxy it. Um, right. Wildfire <laughs> welding over in Addison used to do that with uh, fuel tanks. Mm -hmm. Is that Baker? Yeah, John Baker. John Baker. John Baker. Yeah, yeah they, they still banned them. Because yeah. um, I looked, he used to weld them. Well, well, well I, it was that's filled. what they did. They banned them. They, yeah. A lot the of times, the problem with exhaust, and, yeah. and then the problem the is action. where the um, straps set. Stuff gets in under the straps. Moisture stays in there, and yeah. then it rusts through. I, I, we had a truck that was five years old, and the tank rusted out. And I said, I, I went back to Mac, and I said, I just don't understand how something that's full of a lubricant can rot out. <laughs> They said it happens. It's your problem. So yeah. we made it what twenty years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sitting on a cement floor. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. moist all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and we still don't have an estimate. So, so they're going to try to they're going to try to repair that tank if oh, if, so it's possible. if it's repairable and we'll you know the, the plan is obviously to keep that particular vehicle another mm -hmm. five years. Mm -hmm. um, if they can just yeah. patch it, if you will, yeah. then that will be the fix, which obviously will be a significant cost yeah. saving as opposed to fabricating or just yeah. putting on a brand new tank. So yeah. they will, they'll have to make that decision, but they can't until they inspect it, which right. is draining it. Draining it. Yeah. 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 Draining it. Yeah. Because yeah. Brett texted me today to see if he should still come, and I was like, yeah, you know what, still come because that way they, I want him to be able to move forward with the repairs and have mm -hmm. a conversation with you about it, and then, you know, not. Well, it'll be. Cry. It'll be. <laughs> it'll be June first before it's down there, awful close to it. Probably. Well, it's <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I mean, so, it's got to be scheduled, so yeah. that that puts us at the end of June. We'll yeah. know where we sit with yeah. the budget when it gets mm -hmm. there, and, and hopefully it won't be there. Yeah. And, and, and ready to take it when we bring it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you get it down there? Drive it. Yeah, drive it. We always make Jared yeah. always makes arrangements too, mm -hmm. whether he takes it down and someone follows him or. Okay. Vice versa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Peter, take it down. Mark calls <laughs> it. I run right next door to whoever can fit it into their schedule. To the Port of Albany, so I can pick somebody up on the way back. Well, okay. <laughs> I'll sign a purchase order then from KME and put it in copy in your box. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you guys very much. Oh, it's Zeno Mountain Farm. I said he was coming. I saw him the other day. He came in. I told him it was a holiday. He said that's no problem. Okay. Well, we'll go on to number two on the agenda. Carol Wells requests to use the remaining Prince Lane money for maintenance of the playground. So you saw her um, mm -hmm. yeah. email, and she'd asked me about it. And I said, well, to be honest, I was thinking I had tried to, when I wrote the grant for the downtown for sidewalks, I was going to leverage you know, use this money towards that, and I told her that, and um, said, or move it to a capital building fund, and then she said, well, you know, it'd be really nice if we could put it towards maintaining the playground, and I did speak to Darla, and Darla did tell me that um, it does need to be sealed again. I think last year, or a couple years ago, it was sealed, but I think it was on the United Way Volunteer Day that people came in and, and sealed it. It might have actually been... Um, How much money is available? The Prince Lane. The 92, 92 45, 42. Okay, that's your, I'm sorry, it's so I told her I would ask. Um, I didn't know if you you want to split up, put some towards playground, or put some towards capital building, or put it on capital building and earmark sure. some for the playground. It was, I wasn't sure what you wanted to do. I just told her, I was, I said I had to ask. Well, in the theme of dressing up the park, what do we have to do to the bandstand? We did a great We're nothing thing. right we, now. We got it all done last year? Yeah, we did. We spent a good deal of money, yeah, for now. I mean, it's eventually going to need some electrical, electrical and I think, um, I know that they would like to have recessed lights because right now they have to take the light bulbs with them every time because if they leave them in, they get smashed out. They're just porcelain and stuff in the yeah, ceiling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just screw them in, screw them out. But we did, you know, but last year, 
We, I, I yeah. knew we, I guess I just. Yeah. But, I mean, is there any thought of keeping that, some of that 92 because, you know, Prince Lane's going to need some maintenance years down the road. And you do have a maintenance agreement with, obviously, with Parmelo. I mean, our, right, eventually, yeah, you're right. But not for quite some time. No, no, yeah, course. not for quite some time. Yeah, well, we, you were talking about using it for the sidewalk project, right? Right, that's what I thought so, of originally right. was yeah, saving it for when you were doing Main Street because that's going to be a very pricey project now that you're going to be redoing, um, up, upgrading to LEDs, which I think we may do out of our regular budget after talking to Pete Bouvier. But still, you want to put the lights up. You know, there's some replacement parts because some of the bottoms are just rusted out and put them up on the... Um, Concrete. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. can I guess that Darla hasn't put this into the rec budget? Well, no, or no, because it would be under, and I didn't put any maintenance. It would actually be in the park, park budget, budget, and I didn't increase anything for maintenance because I knew I didn't actually have any idea that they wanted saw it. No one told me that, and I knew it needed to be sealed. But I would, have, I just hoped that you know we'd have to buy supplies and we'd maybe find a volunteer. But yeah, I, why well, did, where did where the wanted saw come from? Or did I mishear you? I, I never knew about it. Um, Darla had said that yes, Carol has always right. wanted some sod um, placed over there, um, but because right now I guess they can they can't keep the kids off it long enough to, <laughs> so for it to seed. So that was one Go of the, the actual, things. She so they just about. want a little more actual turf. What's you know, going to happen sod. if the kids get on the the sod and start stomping it? Nothing. It's pretty. It's ready, already ready made grass. It's already, yeah. Fruit. It's all established. Yeah, that's where she's saying it's just impossible to keep little feet off the seeded area long enough for the grass to grow and mature. How big is that area that they want to do that this new sod? I mean, would they be better off? I, I don't know. Like more said, of that. Oh, Astro, yeah, I talked about that. I don't know if you can buy it in yeah, right. smaller sections or not. I don't know. Is it, it's just that. around the edges of the Astro turf, I think, is what they're looking at. So even We're if they put an Astro turf in, they're going to keep going to always have a transition, so, please. I think yeah. it's between the. The area is closer to the Baptist Church, right? Just over there. I think so. Where it's shaded. Shade. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So I said I didn't know. And um, no, we, we think if we, got, if, we, if we got volunteers to, to do the sealing the first time, why wouldn't we go that, try exactly. to do mm -hmm. that yeah. the second time? Yeah. Buy them some supplies and let them go. But we do need to do something. I'd like to move the money out of the Prince Lane Fund just to find, just to give a new home for it. And it could be as much, it could be just that we you move it to Capitol Building and we earmark like we do sometimes. We set aside, you know, money, 5,000 for the kiosk. We could set aside X amount for the playground future. Because obviously anything to Prince Lane is gonna come out of Capitol Building. Mm -hmm. I would say we move it to the Capitol Fund. And then we can earn that whatever we decide if we want to decide any to go to them. Then it will be there, right? Because right, that's there. where we take it from anyway, right? Mm -hmm. If we yeah. if we yeah. decided to put down sod or stain yeah. or mm -hmm. seal or whatever, that's where the money would come from. Do you want a motion to that effect, or? Um. Yes, and I guess in that motion you should probably say how much you want to be earmarked for the playground. If well, you they, they, I want you don't know yet. You know, right? Know. I'm thinking that you know if they if they want to want to put sod down, they should come to us for the, for the request, and then we exactly. can say yay or nay. Okay, so basically. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to, to if we put $10,000 in the fund, they're going to want to spend it. Right. Yep. right. So first mm -hmm. And it looks like $9,300 for the work they want done is a little excessive. No, that's just, no, that's just long term. Huh? She just well, wanted that's to that's what they want to put into Oh, I see what you're saying. They want to put into that fund. Yeah. Yes, and that is a little much. Particularly since the last time it was done, it was done with volunteer labor. Yeah, we buy that door. So we buy the seal it. Entertain a motion to move that 93. 92, I'll make that motion to move 9,245.72 into the capital. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The motion carried. And you're earmarking that for the No. 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 Okay. Oh, motion to authorize the town administrator to assist the road foreman in warning the tree road. So moved. Does the road foreman's on vacation? That's why it's a error mm -hmm. Second. Any 
So did we know Tracy's got it? Yep. Are they all in town or are they? I got, a, I got a motion here. Let's have a second. I'm oh, sorry. I'll second it. Okay. Now you can ask your question. <laughs> um, where did you go? Okay, he has a list. Trees. <laughs> he has a list. So I can't tell you. He, I just put the bid together. So he basically the bid was you had to meet with the road foreman and he'd show you where all the trees were. Mm -hmm. So um, he had a list, but he said it would just be much easier for him and whoever was doing it if he met with them. Mm -hmm. And again, who's doing it? I don't know yet. We won't know until the bid comes in, and then uh, oh, okay. that's why I'm asking permission. Though. Permission to award, right? Okay, got it. Yeah. Well, I talked to him. Oh, well, we, I should right. tell you, we sent it to McCullough, Craig Brown, Trevi Gone, Brett Sargent, okay. and maybe somebody yeah. else. Okay, so that's the same. Yeah. Lathrop's. Did that's that's a good idea. We don't do that. <laughs> that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's easier to have them say they don't do it than it is to that's right, but I said. skip them. Mm -hmm. There you go. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Motion to authorize the town administrator to sign documents necessary to award the West Street project. So moved. Second. Just Wednesday at 9.30. Wednesday at 9.30. I yep. thought they were supposed to start at the 15th. They were, but we didn't get our permit to construct. That's and what? then once we got our permit to construct, we had to get um, John Harries from USDA RD. And I was told he's the only engineer for USDA RD for the state of Vermont and New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. So we finally got him to approve everything. We end up um, had to change the easement requirements. Um, so that the easement wasn't required for Tom Sawyer because since Mr. Bowen passed, that's still in probate. We could still do the work and she'll still sign the easement after, but since, you know, was in our right away to do construct, it was just kind of a, you know, courtesy to get the temporary construction. Yeah. We'll still do it, but um, just who knows how long probate's going to take. All so those, Wednesday, any, any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Discussion motion to amend the personnel policy. So this is, you know, I really, I didn't catch it when you made the motion to have it effective. I should have made it in July, but anyways, I didn't. So I went, I heard from a couple people about some small changes, you know, uh, and I, I, could, I sent it to you so you could see where it was underlined. Um, I tend to attract changes. So on page four, it was hours of service. Basically, just adding the 30 minutes unpaid time allowed for lunch mm -hmm. was in one section mm -hmm. and not another. Um, then I just had a couple of questions. See where we were. Page um, 10 was some holiday leave. Um, the police department wanted to clarify that it was after that it was four hours next to Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then on. Change. We've always we front loaded vacation time because we don't do CTO. We front load time July first, and so that needed to be changed. <coughs> there was a mistake that an increase in the annual rate of accrual vacation time will occur at the beginning of each fiscal year following their anniversary date. That's not really fair if someone comes in, you know, August once. And that was an oversight. I think someone had marked it to have it taken out, and we hadn't done that. But um, the biggest deal with holiday time is when I sent you um, Sergeant Crow's note, what the select board had decided was that you would give them double time if they worked a holiday. And they would like to see eight hours of regular pay plus eight hours of overtime pay. So I gave you Randy's whole sheet so you mm -hmm. could follow that. Um, I'll just go ahead and tell you all the changes first, I guess. Um, Page 12, it was um, the, the state's sick time. I was supposed to, I had to put in one calendar year because they don't do fiscal year and they can only accrue up to 40 hours. So that was clarification. Page 13 was bereavement leave. It was in days and we had done hours mm -hmm. for most other place. And then there was kind of an immediate family, close family. So we just stuck with close family and took out immediate because so it weren't different times. On page 15, um, leave for officer involved shooting. You can see we added a little bit of language. Um, someone was concerned because the policy, the post shooting procedure hadn't been developed yet. So they wanted a little more clarification there. 
What just a quick question? What if it's a police chief offer shooting? Then it would be the town administrator. Then just a town administrator. Okay. Yeah. And um, under overtime and compensatory time off, I just needed to clarify that what a non-exempt employee was. So I put that definition in here for the Fair Labor Standards Act. Um, explain that. I might be getting there. 16? I thought I wanted to that. Mm -hmm. This one's wrong. Mm -hmm. It's got a line. Okay. Got a line but... um, oh, I think that was just um, the bulleting. It just okay. wasn't, oh. um, it was a format issue. And then that is it. So the bigger, mm -hmm. so they're all pretty much just housekeeping items. The biggest deal was the request for you to reconsider your. Um, Double time to overtime, and, I, and for that I see Sergeant Troy included his explanation. I had one on page four. Sure. We on page eight and sixteen we refer to him as the highway department, mm -hmm. and on page four we refer to him as the road crew. Oh, okay. I think right. we just ought to have it all standard. Yeah, right? four all change yeah. from road crew to highway department. Okay. Yeah, page four on number yeah. nine down there. Thanks. It's funny when you get you read it too many times, but highway department. All right, thank you. And then number the last next to the last sentence on page four, it says employees of the police department and road crew. I should probably say. Yeah, yeah. I'm making mm -hmm. a note here to fix all those on this okay. section. So thank you for that. I'll try to see it. Because page eight and sixteen says highway. Yeah, I'll search <laughs> so for two to see if I did anywhere else. I didn't see it anywhere else, please. All right. Okay. Appreciate that. Did you have another one here? Road forward. Is that all right? That's his title. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but yes. Thank you. Does anybody else have any other ones that I missed or questions? All right. So, did you have any questions? Um, Obviously, Sergeant Crow is here, so you can ask him about his <coughs> about the holiday. He did a nice sheet here for you and gave you an example. The original, the theory had been this. The only theory behind this was to not have someone being paid and book a holiday at the same time. Mm -hmm. That was the only incentive, the only thought behind the whole thing, which was, <coughs> which we did fix. However. Um, However, I think Randy, you know, made some good points in here, so I don't know what your pleasure is. Let's see. Um, so. I mean, I think so. He outlines it pretty well under here. He has a couple headings: scheduled to work holiday, regular shift. He's saying there's zero benefit for having to work a holiday because if you're only paid double time and you're not allowed to bank it too. Um, he's saying that you know basically it's just straight pay, and if employees have the day off, they bank the day um, plus they get holiday pay. So he's feeling like there's no incentive, which I can see what he's saying. Whereas if he, if the person working the shift got eight hours straight time plus eight hours overtime, then there'd be more benefit to it because if you have the day off already, then you know, basically so, you're getting the same deal. So they get eight plus eight, so the double time. Yeah. And then they don't, they can't take a holiday. They can't don't. bank a holiday, no, okay. because if they're getting That's paid for it, right. which mm -hmm. is some, but yeah. he makes a, I don't think he makes a mm -hmm. point here. And then he says double time in one half for OTAN. If you work the holiday and it's an overtime shift, which happens, uh, the employee is getting paid eight hours for the holiday and overtime rate for working the extra shift, which they would get paid for any overtime shift if it was not a holiday. Doesn't so, matter. It's, so it's an interesting point. I mean, because what happens is, is right now, um, he's if you get called out on the holiday. Um, He's saying call outs should not affect holiday pay. And I think he's right about that because we hadn't considered that. And 
we haven't thought about call out. We just thought about strictly working. And um, so he's saying if you get called out on that day and getting the minimum three hour call out, um, those hours would be paid at, at double time and a half or a total seven and a half hours so you don't get the holiday. So I think he's right that call outs should not affect holiday pay because if the road crews off, then. You got it there on number 10. You got, remember the road crew would be paid. Well, I was going to say, we, we did, we did do something with the page road crew. Well, um, say highway department there too. Page 10? Yeah. 20, yeah. 20. Yeah. Right. Under the, all the listed holidays? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And it's third of the last line there. Remember the road crew would be scheduled to have that day. Would be scheduled the day after they got called. No, also. just change that to yeah. highway, highway department. department. I got it. Mm -hmm. So, if... Uh, and so we should also say call outs. I, I, I mean, do you agree that if you get called out, you should still be able to get holiday pay, that you shouldn't be losing holiday pay if you get called out? Right. Okay. So I think that was the right. point with if that the, whole sentence. So, okay. so we'll if the sergeant or patrolman is working Christmas Day and they have an incident where they need the chief a shooting of some kind, mm -hmm. and the chief's going is home and getting his Christmas Day off, so he's coming in and working three hours or so, he's going to get paid double time and a half for that three hours? Is that where I'm going? Am I led to believe that? Right now? Well, under this new policy, he'd get three and a half hours? Under, he'd get three hours. If he hours. worked three hours in a, well, some kind of an incident. Well, this may be a bad example, but yeah, he'd get, he'd get overtime. If he got called out, he would be get overtime for his three hours. He'd get jet three, he'd, three hours or he'd get he got paid his regular holiday. Right, so he'd get paid, yes, he would get paid his regular holiday, and then he would get, because you have a different arrangement, then he'd get paid overtime. So I, I don't think he's a good example. I, say, uh, say I'm, 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 a, well, I'm, I'm having sure. a problem wrapping my head around this because mm -hmm. we, we said... Sorry, sorry. I'm up here. <laughs> <laughs> we said... This is that waiting <laughs> If I can answer any questions. <laughs> Because it's it is confusing. Well, let, let me let me go back to the way I understand it and and make sure we're all on the same page before we go any further. We said any scheduled time was was your your regular pay. Any unscheduled time was time and a half. So if you've got if your regular work hours are seven to three thirty and you have to come in at four, you get paid overtime until seven. So my question is, is if an officer already, well, I'll use the police at this point, if an officer already has his 40 hours in, how come he's getting holiday pay if he wasn't scheduled to work that day? Because it's a, because it's a, we recognize, all, we, recognize all we recognize all we recognize holidays, but are you saying if he got called out if he was scheduled to work? If he wasn't scheduled to work and he already had his forty hours. If he wasn't scheduled to work, so he'd be a so call out. I guess it's different for the police department because yes. it's it's they're scheduled seven days a week. Whereas the road department, if they went out, it would be double time and a half because it would be outside of their regular scheduled time. So you're saying the highway would get double time and a half? Yes, because it's not scheduled. The way I understand it, it's not scheduled time. Anything that's not scheduled time. Oh yeah, we would also pay time. double time and a half, yes. Okay, right, and we just have to remove this um, and unable to accrue the holiday. They'd still be able to accrue the holiday. We should remove that, but they would get paid double time and a half. Yes, okay, I got it. Well, so if they got paid double time and a half, they wouldn't accrue the holiday. They wouldn't accrue okay. the holiday. So see there, so this is where Randy makes a point, is mm -hmm. that there, are, is the road crew being penalized because they're being called out on a holiday? This, uh, you know, I, I think this all came up, this whole discussion came up when we were talking about yeah. Yeah. Christmas Eve, and I said, why are we just closing at noon and not say everybody can have the rest of the day off and not forcing some department heads to say, yeah, you can go home, but you have to take vacation time and yeah. blah, blah, blah. I said, why don't we just close at noon? So that's where this whole discussion started. <laughs> right. To, to Randy's point, people in the office start at 30 right. and the crew starts at 6 or 7. Six. Mm -hmm. So they're being penalized if they have to work until noon and only get that much more time. Well, let's take today, for example, with the police. Okay, so it's a, it's a legal holiday. Mm -hmm. So 
it's the beginning of the week, so nobody's on overtime. But obviously, Randy's scheduled to work today. So he's getting his eight hours of holiday pay because it's a holiday. He's also working. So you're saying... He should be getting time and a half. Yeah. That's but, what he's saying. Well, I guess what I'm saying is each employee should be getting paid eight hours straight time for it. A holiday, whether right. they work it right. or whether they right. don't. Yeah. So, we all so, see, that. Right, so, so, you, so you got your eight hours for the holiday. <laughs> if I work the holiday, there should be a benefit for the employee having to work that holiday. Right. They're mm -hmm. getting the eight hours for They should get eight hours of straight pay. Mm -hmm. So they should have some benefit for working mm -hmm. the holiday as well. So it should gave them time and a half. That is. How is that any different than the person who works an extra shift but still has the holiday off? They'd be paid exactly the same. So what are you? What is you? What do you want? What's your request? Well, the way it was before the policy was you got paid time and a half if it was a holiday and it was overtime. You got paid time and a half of the rate of pay that you were getting paid for that day. So if it was over, if it was a holiday, you were getting paid time and a half for working a holiday. So if it was if it was overtime. On a holiday, you got paid time and a half for the holiday. Ho you got paid time and a half of the holiday rate. Mm -hmm. And where it was getting confusing was you have a holiday rate and an overtime rate. And right now, well, they were That's the same. They were the same. They were a time and a half mm -hmm. rate. So if because the police department does work seven days a week, there are possibilities where. Um, I'm working today as an overtime rate, as a, say an overtime shift. And take Josh, for example, he could have today off, but work his normal day off, say it would be tomorrow, but he works an extra shift tomorrow, or works eight hours of overtime. If he gets paid time and a half for the eight hours of overtime, and I get paid time and a half for working the holiday, it's the same because we're both still getting The holiday paid doesn't go against your 40 hours. The holiday is, is the way I understand it, the holiday pay is straight time, period. Correct. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't go against your 40 hours. I would think that it should because it it's, it's accumulating into your 40 hour week. So yeah. say the chief Eight takes the day off, it counts towards his 40 hours for the week. It does. Oh, see, now my office, it doesn't look that way. If you have a holiday, that's not counted towards your 40 hours when it comes to overtime. If you have a holiday and you work 32 the rest of the week, Mm -hmm. You have 40 hours. If you worked an extra day, like say I did work 40 hours, and eight hours is not overtime. That's just regular straight pay holiday pay. Right. We I would think you have to work the 40, you have to work hours. 40 hours. That's not saying that the holiday, I agree, you should get time and a half. I don't have a problem with that. But I, you shouldn't be able to make overtime off of time off. I mean, right. that was what we tried to clear up before because we had people who were taking a half a day off and then working over and then that would put them into overtime and so right. but the I other part of your policy the other part of your policy says that if overtime. you work out time you work outside your regular hours then you get paid overtime for it yeah you work it's outside your schedule hours. Works, yeah. right so if it's a day that i'm not scheduled to work i should get paid time and a half for if you're not scheduled to work why are you working <laughs> <laughs> So what? So, a, so what is? I still don't know what you want. What is your? Oh, well, I mean, uh, you know, that's not so much, in, a, in a perfect, I just it would just be. I just think it doesn't look like you're as the way it's written that an employee is getting a benefit for having to work the holiday because the right now with getting getting paid double time, you're getting paid the eight hours for the holiday, mm -hmm. and then you're getting paid eight hours straight time for working the holiday. No, I don't think that's what we're saying. You're getting time and a half for working. Well, the way, no, the way no, no that's reads, not what you no. agreed to was mm -hmm. eight hours straight, eight mm -hmm. of, eight hours right. holiday, eight hours straight mm -hmm. pay. So what what so what you're thinking is if you got eight hours, you know, regular for working the holiday, and then do you think you should be making double time for the oh, holiday? What's your no the, the to me time and a half for working the holiday with the way it used to be mm -hmm. is you know to me. Mix is plenty. It's fine. Okay. You know, let's not be over. I, over, over I don't have this a problem with. Time. I don't have a problem with a time and a half for working the, the holiday. The problem I have is if somebody takes that holiday, that eight hours they didn't work, and then, like you said, they pick up another day and they end up 
taking eight hours of overtime. The that holiday makes them forty-eight hours. Right. right. They, in essence, they got that they got that holiday pay at time and a half. The same thing that you did for working. Same. Yeah. Right, and that's it's what you're saying is fair. And I, I, I don't think we our our intention was to say you get to use the eight-hour holiday pay as part of your forty hours. No, it's okay. it's eight hours of straight pay aside from your work day right. or your work week. So, so does it needs to just say not to be included in your forty hours? You'll be paid for a holiday not to be included in your 40 hour work week. It says, yeah, employees will receive holiday leave pay for the number of hours in the employee's typical work day on which the holiday falls at the employee's regular rate of pay. Employees required or scheduled to work on the holiday will receive double time pay but will not be allowed to accrue the holiday to be used at a later date. So employees who work the day will be paid, uh, I'm suggesting, time and a half. Mm -hmm. Here plus plus the yes, holiday. So it's really double time and a half. Right. It is double time and a half. Which for me, if you worked a holiday, which for yeah. working a holiday, I think it's completely worth. It. Right, but I don't think it should. I don't think that he should work the holiday and get and, and get time and a half for the holiday. I agree with, but you taking the holiday and using that eight hours to, to put you over 40 hours, no, I, I, we're on the same page. Yeah, okay. we defined that. Do you know what section that was in? Was under hours of service? Randy, do you remember? The, which part are you talking about? Uh, I'm trying to figure out this over eight, over 40 deal. But taking that a step further, if he works, he's got, he can use oh, it's eight hours a day or whatever he works towards that overtime because he actually worked. Right. I think the schedule right. 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 So if he works if he works forty hours, he's gonna to get today's pay at time and a half. But right. if that ends up putting him over forty hours, he'll get time and a half on the other. Right. Yeah. Yes. Alright, so here's what we So I, I do have one more monkey wrench into that. Good. Because we need to get it right. <laughs> what what happens if I work overtime on the holiday that I work. It sucks to be you. <laughs> <laughs> so I work my eight hours for today. Yeah. So you get eight hours of straight pay, eight, eight hours, hours of double time, time and a half. Time, we're time and a half. Time half. If he works 12. But, but if I work, if, so say if I'm supposed to go home at one and I end up going home at three, so mm -hmm. there's an extra two hours. You get Where's that two ten hours? hours. I think you get 10 hours of time and a half. And you get well, your holiday pay. Well, no, because then he's getting overtime on top of right. overtime. It was almost like right. you'd get, if you doubled overtime, so you'd get... You, you can't stretch no, I, eight I hours. Think, I don't think you can. I, I, mean, I, I'm just just, I, I don't know. But that, that's my it's, question, is what happens when there's overtime when on there's a holiday? When there's overtime on a holiday, I... I'm sorry, but I think it sucks to be you. <laughs> it's time and a half. Time and a half. That's, how, that's my good yeah. reaction. It's yeah. time and a half. Your first eight were double time and a half. Your last two were mm -hmm. time, time and a half. half. Regular time and a half. Because the, the holiday is only an eight hour yeah, shift. Yeah, that's the way it was with the state. It's an eight hour shift. shift. But yeah. Because to me, now you're working 42 hours for the week. Mm. And two of those hours are on a holiday and overtime. So it seems like you're either getting either the holiday paid for working the holiday or the overtime. I think you get paid 50. Other. But you're at your holiday that if you work t overtime it's going to end up in the next. No, no, it's no different than if you work I guess it is a holiday yes but it's no different if you put that two hours in at the end of the week you're going to get time and a half for it. Um, and it's, you check, your check's going to say 40, but again, 40 hours or There's that section that talks time. about outside Overtime. your regular hours, you get paid time and a half for. Mm -hmm. you're but it's a holiday. But you'd, so you'd still be getting still time, you're still time, 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 time and a half. Mm -hmm. It's outside your regular hours, it's still time and a half. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if it's a holiday. Because mm -hmm. we've paid you for the eight hours of the holiday. Right. I mean, to me, that, that the eight hours for the holiday is straight pay. Whether it's regardless, you work regardless, regardless. It's, it's eight hours whether you stay home or come to work, mm -hmm. right? And we used to be able to, you know, whether you get paid eight hours this week or whether you used it, you took a day off somewhere down the road by banking it. It's either or, right? And if the board chooses to make it to where we don't have a, a lot of banked holiday time, I totally understand that. But the employee should still get compensated for that that holiday if they're required to work, and I think I think enterprise. 
the way I understand it, reading is what everybody's saying, but mm -hmm. the difficulty is when it's a holiday and there's overtime involved. That's where the sticking point is. I guess I don't I think, I don't think overtime that's is a, yeah. overtime is overtime. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I see what you're saying, but I just and that's that's why in the past it had been overtime of the rate of pay that you're getting paid. You're just you're, because it's a holiday, you're getting paid time and a half for on a time and a half. Right. Oh, see now I see the rate. Of, well, I guess I see where you're reading. So for, it. So see my rate of pay hours, is what your rate of pay is. Right. Your rate of pay is this, and you get time and a half for that for overtime. Um, but I see right. So if you're saying, making you're saying, if you're making eight dollars, it's twelve. You should get time and a half of, of twelve. That's what that, that's what he's for saying. Two, for those two hours. Two hours. hours yeah. right. mm -hmm. For, for I mean, just the overtime. This is hours. difficult because it's the police department. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of them don't. You know, well, the, department, hours, the, I mean, highway, the yeah. highway department could end up in this situation. Yeah. Oh, that definitely, especially in the wintertime. Because yeah. <clears throat> yeah. that's when the most holidays are. So. And, <laughs> and then you have the issue where it talks about if the holiday falls on the Saturday or the Sunday preceding or following Monday, but that really doesn't necessarily apply to us either. No, I think we go, by the, we go by the exact, whatever the holiday mm -hmm. is. Right. Other, exactly. than, other than chief, chief is you know, obviously Monday through Friday. You just I just took out the front part that where said for employees not scheduled to work. I just said holidays falling on a Saturday will be observed the preceding Friday. Holidays falling on a Sunday will be observed on Monday. That's all but I this, took out. I, I still word that is making it confused because it just says that. That's more for the office staff and everybody so that if people will come to me and say, hey, Trees, 4th of July or whatever the holiday is on a, such a, you know, falls on a Sunday, what day are you? And I'll say, well, you're getting it. Right. So, I mean, I, so one thing I did do is I checked with. I actually just got done checking with one of the troopers and I talked with uh, Bruce about what they did over in New York and state police for one they, they have their timesheets are all different where they have they have a straight time line they have an overtime line they have a holiday line so mm -hmm. if they worked eight they had 10 hour shifts but say they worked an eight hour shift they have eight hours of holiday mm -hmm. they put eight hours in they have eight hours of overtime they put eight hours in and if it's a holiday overtime they put eight hours in so they're actually getting paid for the most part, for oh, overtime on a holiday, triple time. Wow. That's where all our tax dollars go. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a, there are some agencies that, depending on, there's, they have, I don't want to call them super holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas, where you're, okay, so like where that. they get paid for those oh, special holidays, some they get big paid number. some big number. Oh, yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet. Ver, you know, verse, double time versus <coughs> time and a half. Yeah. For those specific holidays, and that's, you know, let's, let's get one thing <laughs> sorted out. You know, so I, I, I mean, let me play devil's advocate here. You know, for you, Randy, like you happen to draw the short stick because you got scheduled for today. You know, this just happens to be your schedule. I mean, when they do the schedule up, do they schedule up far enough to know that, okay, you're working Memorial Day, but maybe July 4th, somebody else to, works that day? Well, you know, or do you guys choose? <laughs> Um, what we've done in the you past know, is for the super holidays, if you will, for Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving, the day after Thanksgiving, we've used those as we've kind of lumped them together to where you have Thanksgiving, the day after Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. Mm -hmm. And what Josh and I have done is rotate those mm -hmm. opposite years. So last year I had Christmas off, this year I'll work Christmas. Mm -hmm. Last year Josh had Thanksgiving off, he'll work Thanksgiving this mm -hmm. year. And we rotate it up mm -hmm. year after year. So at least, you know. For those big holidays, there's, you know, we know that we're gonna have some time with the family okay. for those holidays. But so I'm just thinking, I mean, this is the other normal work week might be a Monday. So you know, if he gets his schedule, just puts him on that day, whether it was a holiday or not, he would have had to work. Mm -hmm. So that's, I mean, if you take a, just take the holiday out of the picture, you would have gotten time and a half. If you work two hours or overtime, you're gonna get time and a half. Right. Correct. So, I mean, that's, I guess that's just where I'm coming from, that, you know, we're just throwing the holiday in there. You know, if he had to work, so he gets paid the eight hours plus time and a half for the eight hours he works. And then if he's got hour, if he's got overtime, then it's, to me, it's, then it's a time and a half. And really, the, the overtime on a holiday is fairly rare. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of plays in today because of the uh, click and ticket task force that we've got going on, but that's... Mm -hmm. That's grant, grant funds. Right? It's, grant funds. Right. It shouldn't really, it's not really a difference, but it's a matter of how do I build that into the grant. Mm -hmm. And it's going to have to, you know, the grant would actually have to obviously go by what the policy says, so mm -hmm. how I build that. But. I mean, my, 
my thought is, and like if you work 10 hours today, you'll get a time and a half at 10 and you'll get eight hours of holiday and Josh who's in Lincoln for the day off or Kevin or Peter or Eric, Therese, everybody who's a town employee is getting eight hours to stay home. And you're getting that plus you're getting time and a half working for working the <laughs> for working the, for the benefit for having to work the right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And that, and that I guess what, that's what I'm saying because initially with the double time, you were just getting right. Straight. And I get, I can, I, I, I can totally agree with that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. That one I can, that one I can, I can stand behind. But the, the, time and a half on time and a half, I, don't feel. I mean, like I said, those are those are rare occasions. It's not like we throw somebody on an extra shift. A full shift usually uh, for those, but you know there are times where if you're working obviously an eight-hour shift, there's the chance of working overtime on, yeah. on a day that happens to be a holiday. Well, there's always a chance you pick somebody up in the last hour of your shift yeah. that right. ends up being a, a two, three hours. Right. You know, somebody who has to be processed for DUI or something, you're you're going to be in overtime. It's the nature of the beast. Mm -hmm. I think we. We're leaving it at time and a half. Right. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I picked We're going to change it to time and a half. I picked up all the other changes. Yeah. I've been through them all right before you came in. So they, we picked up all the other changes mm -hmm. that you can give yeah, I guess the other so question I would have is Is there any, is, if you've got the, if the holiday is my day off, I would like to after this. If the holiday is my day off, I get my 40 hours for this. For the week, because I work my 40 hours. Mm -hmm. How's that holiday? That one holiday work? Do I just get? A next, is I get paid eight hours of straight time that week? Yeah. Because okay, I mean, it's. Just, I'm gonna double check for the gym. Because I know originally it said you banked it, which. Right. Which we well, if you bank it, you can use it as another date. Yeah. Right. But You'll get 48. What you're saying you is you're going to get, 40, it's you're gonna get 48 hours of pay. You can do whatever you want with that eight hours. You can take that eight hours, or you can bank. Right, it. but the employee that's has to work the holiday, can't make that eight hours. That's they right. Because we're not hours. saying they can make no. eight hours anymore. Right, we're saying that's why they're not getting paid. The, the, the one working. The right person working it can't bank it because they're getting paid to work it. So you can't work it, get paid the extra money, and bank it. That's what was happening before. Oh, the thing was, is, is whether you had the eight hours for the holidays, whether you get paid eight hours today or whether you use eight hours on a day off, you use it on a day off somewhere that we're down the road. Right, but when people are, are you know, accruing 60, 80 hours of holiday right. pay that they accrued at one rate and are being used at a totally different one two years later, plus I don't think it's fair. I think, well, I, I, I'd agree. You That's, know, I think you know, that if you're working it, you're getting paid that extra work it, so you shouldn't bank it, too. But to me, it would make it be, to be fair across the board, then it would, then everybody should get paid for the holiday for the week the holiday falls. Whether they work and or not, not be able to bank. So if I no, if I if didn't work, that's what the policy said. Yeah, nobody can bank it. it. That's what we're doing. It so says that nobody can bank it. Well, right. there's one section in here, unless it's unless it's been changed, that said that if you had the holiday off, you could still bank it. No, no, we must. Have, I'll say it would be under holiday. I think we removed that. I mean, no, it, it I think been, we had that, that. That was why we removed it. We said we don't want them. We don't want to bank it. Um, Is it under 22, Randy? It's under 22 after the holidays. It's like the third sentence. Employees Employee. required or scheduled to work on the holiday will receive double time pay, but would not be allowed to accrue the holiday. Any overtime work of the day, a, a member of the road crew or highway department would be scheduled to have the day off, but if they get called in, they would also be paid double time and a half and unable to accrue the holiday. Holidays that fall during an employee's vacation leave will not be charged as vacation. They'll leave, they'll take it as a holiday right then and there. But it's not clear that that nobody else can bank it. So, so no one can accrue a holiday. Well, if, if, they're, in there, if they're, they're not banking it, they're working. Or right. right. If they're not taking it, they're working. And who's going to be working when? Yeah, I can, the road crew who gets called in. I can, right? I can make a note that nobody. Yeah. Yeah. No, just to me, yeah, I, I think I, 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 I so for the, for the week that where you have the day off mm -hmm. on the holiday, you should get paid 48 hours of straight pay. Right. Correct. Right. 40 hours for working the week for your regular uh -huh. shift. So you're eight hours, hours for that so your vacation. Uh -huh. Right. And if or you your, work over, uh, for, if you actually work over 40 hours, mm -hmm. then you get paid. Right. Your time so if you work 
If you work 50 hours, 80 hours, that's your holiday pay. You'll get paid two, two, two hours, hours of overtime. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to everybody? Clear as mud? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Until some... Getting it down, yeah, and, getting it down exactly. and ready to make it clear as mud. Yeah. <laughs> Have you got yeah. Yeah. the gist of what yeah. we're... Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Do we want to see this again before we... I think we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're not going to vote on it now. No, I'll make, I'll make all the changes. Yeah. Like and I, and I think well. maybe to fair to the employees, the changes that we've made should, I don't want them to have to sign off on all of it, but should they at least look at the changes we've made? Well, um, you know, I think they should be notified that we've made changes. Yeah, yeah. It says it here in the, it says that they'll be notified. That's part of the policy. Mm -hmm. So I can give them, um, and I've met with, with um, one employee from the highway department and made his changes, so I'm sure we're happy with it. And, um, and the rest were from the police department. <laughs> so just so for this week, or we're going with the way the changes are, just so we're right. Yeah, you'll we'll get all that. Just so we're doing the time sheets for the week right. properly. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. I can build. A, and I'll tell Jen problem. too. Mm -hmm. But um, I'll tell Jen eight holiday straight. Today and the clicking ticket too. I'm sorry. Eight. You guys working today? Oh, okay. Yeah, there was an eight-hour shift, and Josh and I split it four hours on my sh on the day shift, and he's working four hours for the night shift. And actually, was in Bristol, so. I'll um yeah, that's awesome. I'll um make sure Jen knows. What's that? I heard about the Lincoln was that. I know uh, Bruce was up there for the sheriff's office, and Josh was up there for a little while. Yeah. Um, we have Jen's car over here in uh, town. Like something. Like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes. And they're actually currently, right at the moment, running a checkpoint by the rescue squad. So. Oh, good. <laughs> four seat, four seat belts, but in so, any so don't go to the so. shop, just go home. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, that's before the rescue squad. So oh, so that's right. Yeah. So wear your seat belts. Yeah. So that's what they're looking for. Number of problems. Thank you. That's the only thing they're looking for, so if I have an open <laughs> 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 yeah, That might be an issue. Something if something else comes down the foot, they'll deal with that, too. Oh, okay. The primary the purpose of the checkpoint is for seat belts. Seat belts. <laughs> I got stopped Friday afternoon in Morrisville. Oh. For now, we're in seatbelt. Hey, no, I'll answer any checkpoint here. Had to pull the camper. Thank you, Officer. Well, Thanks. Thanks. Sorry, mm -hmm. appreciate your insight. Because not seatbelt again. Unless they're driving. Unless they're driving. Apparently, Will's not coming home. Huh? Hmm? Will's not coming home. Huh? I guess not. He scheduled the appointment. I said it's a holiday. Is that a problem for you? No. Seven thirty. Yep. Yeah, I think that's pretty Sounds cool. cool. I'd like to see that. I know. <laughs> so I guess he'll go to the yeah. June twelfth yeah. sub board meeting. Okay. Motion to approve minutes of May fifteenth, two thousand seven. Did you get them? No. No. And I okay. guess we won't be doing that. Well, I wasn't sure because I didn't see them, but <laughs> most of you were here during the week, so you emptied your mailbox. I, 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 didn't, I did not what touch my mailboxes. No, I just put it in my okay. So it must be Jen. Pam was on vacation, so Jen no. must have missed it. Okay. Okay. Jen. Authorized accounts payable, warrants, and liquor license. Right. Special so events. Joel, Bullcock can you rocks. tell Tasha how much the AP warrant is, please? I sure can. Just a little more. Yeah. Oh, uh, Tasha. <laughs> yeah, it's the one you didn't sign. <laughs> Fifty-five thousand three hundred ninety-one dollars and twelve cents. Thank you, sir. Five five three nine one point one two. So your um, special event permits are from Hocock, the same hours, three to eight, um, covers, cold spring spirits, and Boyer's hard cider and wine. Boy, there's going to be a lot of alcohol. There is. Yeah. 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 We ought to have Randy and Josh <laughs> on either end to Main Street. I know. I hope they have food there. Oh, I bet you DLC, DLC will be here, I bet. Yeah. I, I would there imagine. Are. I mean, yeah. just about every venue is going to be up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I said that to him Tyler, when he was here. Good. I said, are you going to have food? <laughs> <laughs> so um, those are the Pocock ones. Covers. So all we need is a motion for those, yep. correct? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Can I ask a question for you? Yeah. Yep. They're all within the time frame? Yes. yes. Three days. Okay. So, all right. Okay. Then I'm an aye. <laughs> Opposed, nay. Motion carried. The other one is for art on Main. Art galleries can have their own, they have their own special permit. And so their event is on June 9th. So they have a art gallery permit. 
So we'll move. Uh, Argon main. Paint and sip kind of thing, or? Yeah, um, <laughs> let me see. Uh, I think they do, they do have a plumbing stuff. Hang on. Hang on. That's where I paint. That. <laughs> Some of these places I've never heard of. Yeah. Argon Main? I mean, have you ever heard of them? Yeah, they're right down there. Yeah. Deer, yeah. deer, deer that's, the, yeah. that's the art place that's yeah. down there? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so they're having a, lick, they're having a, yeah, they're requesting a special art gallery. Yep. Okay. Okay. It says art galleries, bookstore, museums, or a library. They have their own serving permit. Art on Main, oh, location, on main. front that's gallery nice. space, oh. date of the event, June 9th, 2017, from 3.30 to 7. Um, Ann Perkins has completed the course, so um, all it says is contact name, Annie Perkins. I think what they've done, some, when it was a bookstore, they used to do it, and they'd have a signing and just serve wine, okay. and um, so it doesn't... That's not what I thought yeah. you said. Of course, these are all said fun. Argon. Oh, Argon. Oh. Oh. Oh, Argon Art on Main. Art on Main. Oh. Yeah, it just yeah. Kind of, it doesn't. It doesn't. They don't have to put in many what details they're doing here. What it is. Okay. No, it just says hours of operation, and they're within our front gallery space, mm -hmm. and that's it. What are their hours? They're saying three thirty to yeah. seven. So they're well within our. Yeah. And they're, uh, all those go to the front of the state anyway, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Then he notifies the local PD? Uh, yeah. No, he doesn't notify the local PD. The DLC, will, they can come down and do their own inspection. Okay. Basically, they just approve them, and they usually tell the local liquor, you know, control guy. So, mm -hmm. no, I'll ask Kevin if there's, we have, like, when we had Lulu's, that was something mm -hmm. we hadn't done, so I did mm -hmm. call Kevin, and he said, no, it's fine, Teresa, it's within Hatch's hours, and... So if you get one that's out of the norm, I talked to call. somebody who went to that thing and said it was, it was great. I was going to go and I never did. Oh, the the, 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 the pop up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. good. So I have Joel. Yeah, have Joel made the motion. I don't have a second yet. Second. Okay. okay. Good. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Select board concerns. Michelle. I have two things. Um, do we? Is it R&L who does our, our drop off point? Are they bringing in anything for the composting? Because I know July 1st is another deadline for our food. But you, well, it's for a certain amount that you. Right. Use. Anybody can start. Which... Right. Anybody can start. Are they going to be providing? We're actually. That? Joel's going to provide me with a couple of dates on a Saturday that we can go meet with them. I, okay. I emailed you about it. I just, just want to make sure that we're kind of in line and ready to go. Yes. Yeah, so, well, because their one of their options is to have something there, which I think is. Absolutely not. We should not agree to have something there. Out, right? I think he should have to bring, bring in something in out. out. Yeah. It's just going to be rats and everything no, else. And it is the town really highway. Good. I just think it's horrible. No. I, know, I, I don't know. I think oh, he's got to bring something delicious. in now. I do know that they have different composters um, and that they will. That Cheryl they, wants to do a demo over there. Yeah. Middle of June. She's, yeah, I don't know. I guess she was working with Darwin, I think. Yeah, but. And they will supply a bear proof food scrap thing and I told him it, at the last at yeah. the county saw always meeting I just said you realize where our drop off is? Yeah. It's right on the edge of the village. Mm -hmm. And I says mm -hmm. Yeah. I said I can see it coming in on Saturdays and going dumping in it, then be taken away. But yeah. not, we just need to talk to Richard about what his mm -hmm. plan is because he's really the one you're asked to have the plan. Mm -hmm. Since he's the one we contract with. Mm -hmm. So it'd be nice if we could just bring something in and I take it with him. So yeah. I just want to make sure we're on. Uh, yeah. The other thing is, somebody had talked to me about where School Street comes out to um, West Street. You know those couple of parking spots right there, right next to School Street. They can't see when they're pulling out. You can't see traffic coming coming down. And I've had this problem myself where you, you can only sneak out so far, and then you can't sneak out anymore before you're going to be hit. Oh. I'm wondering if we can make that. Like, Subcompact parking like those first three spaces. Cause You're talking looking west or looking south? Looking east. 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 Looking east. east. Yeah. Um, and I said, I don't know. I said, I'd check. I mean, I have an SUV and I've had that problem. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not, not sure, sure that Catholic Church is going to like that. 
Um, but looking well, east. Well, it's on the park. Isn't it's it? on the park. It's on the park. Yeah, so you think yeah, maybe no, but right where that drain is. Yeah. 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 Com cars. Compact cars. Yeah. I can yeah. ask sub or not yeah. sub, just compact cars. Good spot for this person was just saying park park hit somebody or been hit a couple times trying to get out. Oh yeah, you definitely have. You get way out sometimes. Looking east, compact cars only. Coming from what is that Park Street? Not really good. It's not really different than trying to back out of the, one of the parking spaces on Main Street. Yeah. Like that oh, yeah. Last yeah. Week, like, you couldn't see there was an SUV next to him. Yeah. 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 That's why I park because my car is so low. I take the first parking spot on the green because if I get beside Eric Warren's van, forget <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's yeah. why I back in. I'm trying That's to look at the lights and you're watching this yeah. guy to make sure nobody's coming. And oh, yeah. But I can, I'll ask Peter Uber. He's on vacation. Awesome when he gets back. Yeah. That's all I got. Pete, I'm good. Ted? One thing, and that is, uh, I was asked, and I have, don't have an answer for this, the group that assembles on the corner where the... the piece. Um, huh? Friday night. On Friday night. Mm -hmm. Do they have a permit, and do they need a permit to assemble? They don't need a permit to assemble. They don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was, when, when, this, when this whole thing started, and we were talking about putting a memorial there. We had a, a gentleman who happened to be my uncle come in and asked us to ban him for being there. And I said, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, you served your country so that they have that right. <laughs> so yeah. um, they I do don't that. understand why they don't do it by the, by the peace card. Probably because they get more visibility yeah. there, mm -hmm. yeah. would be my guess. But. Joel? Just, you mentioned it tonight, the lights on Main Street, the, you know, the big bulbs, you know, the, the street light, the street lights, uh -huh. the, or the decorative lights. Yes. Yeah. Um, have you considered just uh, those metal heat lights in their bulbs? I don't know what's in there now. Uh, to be frank, that's Peter Bouvier's territory. Okay. He, he has had some of them converted and he's in the process of having them all converted to LED. He's already had a few yeah, of them just done, on hook into, but I don't know what's I'm in there. I'm hooking the ballast in there or the I don't trans know. Because that's what I did at work on hours. It saved us a lot of money than buying yeah. a new fixture. My estimate, I think I got was two fifty a light to convert them to L from whatever they are now to LEDs. Because this two twenty went down through their nail to run those lights. Oh. Because we had to get parts from Sternberg okay. and. That's so all. I just. I, I can't answer. And then question. you, you had a couple of the other things. Just transformer to step it down. Right, and then you have a one there. I wanted to ask you about the same thing about the power parade. I'm, I'll yeah. wait for you to. Mm -hmm. So, so I, do, you, do you need me to ask somebody about the lights? I'll, I'll check with Peter. Because I'm not the person. I, I'll, I'll check with Peter. Then. I just, you don't mind. I don't okay. Just a little more. Why don't those people need a permit? And the new ordinance that you passed it's, um, was for over 100 people. Okay. So, so now you can answer the person's question. You didn't have a question. It's on your <laughs> yeah. I'm good. Therese. All right. So, let's just start with the fountain. Just say that Alan Clark is the best volunteer ever. <laughs> ever. I heard Clark is volunteering. Yeah. Thank you, Clark. Oh, well, he, he, I had. He's and, looking for something to do. Well, let me tell you. Yeah. And yeah. he yeah. found a project because no one responded. Well, that's not. One gentleman responded to my ad and was going to help with the fountain until his wife reminded him that he was retired. <laughs> so he said that. Graciously, thanks, but no thanks. So I ended up getting Daniel to come down. I'm like, look, nobody is, I need to get the fountain up and running before Memorial Day. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. So to get the head of paint and everything going, get in, I'd ask the road crew to power wash it. And they had done that. And then Alan came in. So he and Daniel actually worked for like four hours or more on one day to get it. They got all painted. And then we, and Dan and I bought parts after we spoke to the road foreman and then for the first time he comes in he's like, the thing doesn't drain very well. I'm like, no, it takes forever. I usually wade into the fountain in the morning. I would pull the plug and then Daniel would come two and a half, three hours later to clean it. So he comes back and says, do you mind if I come in with a vector truck? I'm like, you, not yeah. yourself. <laughs> Did he have veiled in with yeah. that? So he comes in and he's dealing with that and he, um, he and then, so we go through this, this whole process and I brought him out everything that we had, the tools that we used and the skimmer and this and that. By goodness, if he doesn't go to start it up and the pump doesn't work and I'm like, oh, please don't hate me. I was like, it worked and I shut it off. So the next thing I know, he's draining it and you should have seen it. 
I actually went home and told Daniel, I, he said, hey, did that work when Alan drained it? I said, yeah, he goes, how long did it take, mom? Half hour, 45 minutes? I'm like, three minutes, what? I said, you should have seen that thing go. So we were laughing about it, and then I told him I could call Jim, like, nope, nope, I got it. Next thing I know, he's out there with tools, and he got it working, and it, and it looked great, and then, I was chuckling because then now there's like holding the court out there and there's people out there and, and next thing I know he has Mark Bouvier looking into the history and he wanted to see the parts and I sent him all the scanned the emails that Bill and Carol had back and forth about what they knew about it and I had an old picture and so anyways so that thing is going great and he comes over and says well looks like the curb stops leaking I'm like okay I don't have any money for that so I'll, I'll scope it out and I talked to Cyrus and then I talked to the road foreman and who agreed that next week when he gets back from vacation that he would dig it you know for the town it's possible does that go to, to school street that one does and it's one of I don't know what the term is I don't think you so. would turn it on because it's it's towards Park think, Street. No, it's towards Park, Park, goes to Park I Street. I thought it was yeah. North Street. It, not this one. The, the current connection goes to Park Street. And you would turn it on and water would bubble to the surface, but then it would always go back down. But now there seems it was leaking. If you, he installed even a valve, I come out and then there's Chad right out there. I'm like, jeez. <laughs> so he, has, <laughs> he put a, 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 like a shut off under the fountain. Different term for that, but anyways. Ball, yeah, there you go. That's what he did. And then it was leaking out the other way. So either way, it was still leaking. But anyways, the road foreman said not this week because he's on vacation, but next week he would come and he would dig I, it and we could I wouldn't be connection. surprised if that line is galvanized. Well, that's what I wonder because it comes out copper, but that's my concern. And then someone said, well, we could dig over to where it was dug on, you know, where Munson's came yeah. out. But I'm like, look, you know, if we can just get... I said, I think that's part of a whole bigger project of the fountain. If I can just have them expose the curb stop and we can just fix the curb stop, let's... Well, if it's galvanized, you... Curb stop here, though. If yeah. the curb stop is ungalvanized, you yeah. want to be prepared to go back to the main. Yeah. Yeah. Shut off. So, I, well, we, may, we, could, we could bypass it because it comes in here from School Street, and here's the fountain, and over here is where it goes to North Street. So Alan was saying, well, what if we just dig all the way around? I'm like... You know, so there's one line that does go to North Street. There yeah. is. There's a brand yeah. new line that mm -hmm. Munson put in, but we're not hooked to that right now. So I was really hoping the, we could just. But the issue is, is if you find out it's galvanized, you got one of two choices. You yeah. either go back to the main and dig it up and shut the corp off and hook the other one in, or you put a new line from there back to the main. Right. So you don't buy, you don't, I can't fix it if it's, we can't if it's galvanized, it's, galvanized. it's going to look like a water fountain under your hand. Why don't we just go when we did the, put it. when we did, well, you're still going to have to dig it up at the main right. and shut the, shut the curbs, uh, the corporation off. But there is another option. We just continue to let it leak. Yeah. And, and it just overflows the fountain occasionally, so we have to pull the plug to drain some water out. And, uh, hmm. but... I just didn't want to open up an entire. Oh, so it's line. leaking through the There's valve a faucet yes. out of the ground. Into there the was valve. a faucet up underneath okay. it. You turn on the yeah. curb stop, and then there was a faucet up underneath the fountain. Exactly, and that's what he put the new ball valve on. So, so that's if you, where it's if you there. leave that, well, how, it, if you shut that off, then it leaks back at the curb stop. But if you but leave not that inside on, the fountain. right? If you leave it on inside the fountain, it just basically right. overflows the fountain. Right. So. I so was, I'm guessing that you've got a galvanized line out there if it leaks when you close that one. Well, we'll find out when we do. You can't do a band-aid fix on that, right? Well, that's what I was really hoping for. And it's funny because I told Alan, like, well, maybe in a, you know, in a week. A week? I'm like, listen, I know you have to get your favors in slow. We can't burn them all up at once. I have to talk to the road foreman. So anyways, Alan has been terrific, and the fountain looks great. And I think I saw you the great hands, I have said for years that I think that would be the perfect capital campaign. You know, you put the thermometer in front of the building, you raise the money that I think people would buy into that and support it as a capital campaign. Where are you putting this tomorrow? If anyone, yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, exactly. You can get one of those rounds. Yeah. So anyways, the temperature I, of the day. I think it would be a, um, I don't know if anyone's going to spearhead it would him, be him. But anyways, he is terrific and it's, usually it's me begging favors or trying to get something going and he's just done a terrific job. So I'm just very thankful. Oh, thank you. Um, BFD warranty items. So um, I had... <clears throat> 
we had the, the walkthrough and then we had two gentlemen from Nailer and Breen there the other day doing all the stuff on the, um, on the repair list. Currently, I believe that the last thing that we have right now is the siding on the west side. There was the flashing that was thin and they said that it oil canned. It really just didn't look good and we have not been happy with it from the get-go. They tried nailing it and then it just warped. So they came back and mocked, did two mock-ups of a fit and one of them we liked and one of them we didn't. It's, definitely, it's a heavier gauge metal. Um, they're going to have it bent, so it's actually going to look more substantial. And they're going to leave the existing flashing in place and just put this over it. So this is more of a cosmetic fix. Um, we're, we're in negotiations now about it because the only thing we really talked about was the west side. There was a little bit on the, what would that be, north and south sides. I don't know, you guys call them A's or B's. I don't, know. I still don't understand that whole thing. But nonetheless, <laughs> those sides. There's a little bit there. Maybe it's the roadside and it goes clockwise. Just oh, so okay. Know. All right. So on sides, there's also some on A and C then. So, but that's not going to be fixed. We've always talked mainly about the, about the side that's, you know, facing um, the right, B right, side. Right. We've talked about that. And there's obviously four, saw, course, there's four right. courses of it. And we really were focusing on the two that were the most noticeable, but... I was hoping that they would fix all four courses. That's nothing that they're really interested in doing right now. So we're negotiating on that. So we're kind of working on that. I also said that I would like it to be, to get another year warranty out of it once they put the new metal in because, you know, somebody's got to take responsibility for that. So I had sent that email late to Friday, I don't know, five, six Friday night. So we'll see. And I also had said I wanted Kevin Harper's opinion, so I'm waiting for him to get back. So there's going to be some on the sides, I guess, A and C, that are not, um, that are going to have the holes. And it's a little bit. But isn't, aren't, but aren't we still under the warranty period? Shouldn't it be yeah. covered? I mean, it's still within a year. Yeah, it is. It I mean, is. That side towards the west with the firm and park in there. That's I looked at it the other night. Brett took me around. I yeah. said, where they tried to screw that, it's lumps in like that. Exactly. And they don't want to take it down because they got to take the siding off. Right. All that because they, mm -hmm. they which is back, weird. they're still going to so have. You can't see the nails. Yeah. And the last piece is bent up on there. If they apply it on over what there is now, why isn't the water going to run down behind? Because it, it goes up behind the siding. Goes up behind the siding. And so mm -hmm. they're going to be able to get up behind the siding. Yeah. There's yes. a gap. There's, there's a, a gap, gap, gap the, there. Yeah. Okay. So I think, so I like the new fix and the heavier duty gauge metal. I don't think it's going to oil can. That's what he said. We spoke to one of the workers at Nail and Green was pretty forthcoming about it, showed us a sample. Then there was some questions. They agreed, obviously, that they're going to put in with stainless steel nails, that they were going to paint the nail heads. But then the email was a little bit like, well, Brett can provide the paint. I'm like, nah, we're not, no, no. And there's so, still, there's still the, um, the eyewash station is still leaking back towards the doors. Yeah. Okay, was that on his that was list? On, that was on the original list. Okay, I'll make sure that it was fixed then. Um, I washed. They showed him that one. Yeah, because I know it they had. It doubles gone. right back and goes underneath the, mm -hmm. under the wall. Yeah. So, okay, so it's draining back toward the wall. If it was on the list, it should have been repaired, draining. Um, because as my understanding is they've gone through all of it except the side, draining yeah. back to. Then wall. I don't understand. Brett was trying to figure, tell me because. I went over the other night, Star and I went over to take some supper over mm -hmm. to get prep for the, the meal the other day, and the back door wouldn't shut. Right. And they're saying right. there's too much air in that vestibule. Those yeah. Steel, those metal doors on the back of the glass, they, they wouldn't shut for me. And they're going, right. the air cavity in there is so tight, they said we want to take the strip out of the middle of them. But we're not going to do going, that. I'm going, huh? Because that was strip out. I'm going. That's going to be astronomical. No, they're going to take out the um the weather the strip. The weather stripping in the middle. Of the well, then it wouldn't be. Then it wouldn't be airtight. Airtight. Right. right. And I said no. So they make a brush type uh, mm -hmm. astronomical. Yeah. The uh, strip will down at the hospital. Yeah. So what we decided was we're not doing that because we knew the building was super tight. That's why you have makeup air when you run your exhaust fan mm -hmm. upstairs in the kitchen. So we knew that was really tight. So basically, it's just an education currently for firefighters saying when you leave just make sure that door shut tight because I actually went over one morning and then said to Brad oh hey thanks for letting me in he's like I didn't let you in yeah that's, 
So, um, so it's just going to be bothers me. I right. Said. It's because people just can't assume it's closing behind. Them. I have the exact same problem with that far outside door right here. Um, at certain times of year when it swells, we have, you, it's not clicking. You have to go physically and close it all the way. So we told him no, he couldn't take the weather stripping out. That we'd just educate okay. people to make sure the door was closed. Yeah. Um, because yeah, it was definitely weird. So we're we're working on the whole siding issue, but. He's saying if he had to do all of the four courses on all three sides, that it would be like 12 grand. And I'm not sure. We never really mentioned the other profit. sides. We never mentioned the sides. Not ours. Right? We never mentioned the other side. We really focused on. Doesn't matter. On that You're side. still within the year. To me, it's yeah. it's cosmetic. It's not we, a warranty. Well, the day of the walkthrough, when I complained about, you could see the. The white paper behind the grade. Yeah. And I go, it's, it's just not acceptable, Terry. Mm -hmm. right. Was it Terry? Or Terry White. Yeah, Could Terry. be, and they were and working goes, on. Well, that's that's the way it is, and I'm going, no, it's not the way it is. Mm -hmm. The metal and it's just bent. And, and they tried, remember they tried to screw the overlaps together, and then yeah. they pulled the screws, and, and that's when there's it, a hole in there. Yeah, and that's when it went like that. It, so it, is the it, sun got totally rippled. Well, so you tell me. I thought I don't know. Is this is this a is this a warranty issue or because the flashing is working, it's doing what it's supposed to. It's a cosmetic issue. So is it warranty or cosmetic work is not covered by the warranty? I'm asking you. I, I can read the warranty. Ought to be. I I would would okay. So I'll go through the warranty. It was, it I'll was brought it was like, it's part of the work. Yeah, yeah. if it's yeah. not yeah. brought to their attention. You know, June 30th, July 1 of 2016. We went through the whole thing. We talked about it. It's yeah. been on the punch list, but it's been on the punch list as, the, as that side. Right. Not all three sides. And to be honest, I didn't really notice it as much until, I mean, now, obviously, it's been a year. Yeah. So we're, I'm working on it. I sent, like then, I said, I sent an email. All right, so. You can piss him off. You're not going to be here. I don't know. <laughs> I just probably wasn't happy when he got my email uh, tomorrow. He won't be when he sees it tomorrow morning. Um, so the second or the other item is uh, Liz Lovely regarding the revolving loan fund. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is not uh, this this is good news. So Peter Ryan and I went to a meeting in Waitsfield with a group of um, basically all the creditors. So what the best case scenario is is that. Um, she has somebody looking at her who's willing to invest, or maybe willing to invest, he's looking at her. Obviously, they weren't thrilled when they saw how many creditors she had, but she does have some who are willing to take their credit and turn it, like one was for, was money they were gonna turn into equity. So she has a little bit of wiggle room there, um, but my our best case scenario is she, is we're gonna be offered some amount of cents on the dollar. Um, we do have a personal guarantee. Um, I spoke to the town attorney and he said most likely if they offer you a buyout of any sort, they're gonna make, they're gonna say you're gonna take this and get rid of the personal guarantee. The other option is we come out with nothing and she declares bankruptcy. In which case then it's, then you, you're hanging on and you're going to bankruptcy court and hoping, um, but we know there's not, I mean, we're second position behind um, Northfield Savings Bank on the equipment, but mm -hmm. that equipment isn't gonna cover what they owe Northfield Savings. Um, and she Don't did say also, okay. that the assets and the book, the AR was, you know, the majority of that was uh, Kevin Harper's. So. Mm -hmm. But I thought we were third in line after Vermont Economic Development. We're second in line after Northfield Savings, but if the, if the equipment so, sells, it's not gonna cover no. what they owe them. So we'll be the, if we take a hit, it'll be the first time we've ever taken a hit. So what we're really hoping for, obviously, is that that someone buys her out or is an investor and we're offered at least something on the dollar. We told her, you know, during the meeting, she she wondered, I think she was kind of looking for what we would accept. And we said, same thing the bank did. was, look, we want everybody, same thing everybody wants. We want our principal back. Mm -hmm. And I just said, look, if you you know, go down, we will, we will try to collect off our personal guarantee. That's why we had you sign it. And then they just, she just said basically that she would declare bankruptcy. So at the time, I know I spoke to, you know, um, 
Pete Ryan again. And obviously, when Revolving Loan Fund made the decision, the numbers were here, a couple of investors came in, things looked really good. And there was a couple of big uh, Wegmans and a couple of accounts that were doing really well. And it just, you know, so some really good things were happening and it, and it could have really worked out. But right now, we're just hoping that the investor comes in. So. Okay. And she's paid down less than twelve dollars on her own. Well, because remember the yeah, deal was the I first know. few payments were yeah. interest only. Just interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and her yeah. first principal yeah. payment she so called and said she couldn't make. Right. So hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, something comes of it. And um, but we don't know yet. So, but that was Peter and I were in Waitsfield at Northfield Savings Bank. Now the third one down. I won't mention names, but the third one down. Yeah. Um, I'm confused on the back. Did he make a payment on 40117? No. no, no, that's uh, that's, that's what he should have. That's in. Um... No, these are no, no, no. The last. That was his that's schedule. Yeah, that was oh, his schedule. Okay, that was yeah. his schedule. Yeah, let me just see if it, I just want to look at one. That's a late quick. charge on the back. It's yeah. a total of late charges. Yeah. No, um, pay, so yeah, so I think we send that small claims court. Well, you know, at this point you can't because of your agreement. But uh, he has something in the works. He was in about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. So he might have something in the works. So he might be coming in with a payment. Um, so that would be a mm -hmm. fine thing. Yeah. So you know, no one put along. Also, too, now he has a new space. Uh, smaller space right. looks really nice. Uh, we went to the open house, uh, Battle Island, this? and it looks great. Um, he's still on Main Street, but he has less spice there. Um, so just a little update on the Human Powered Parade. I think overall, um, it it seemed to go well. I got a phone call or text message that morning from Darla, so I had to come to town, <laughs> and um, I did end up. Um, we didn't get any proof of insurance from the young man that was going to do the skateboard um, uh, demonstration. demonstration. So I went, I spoke to her, came back to the office, got a couple hold harmless agreements, got to meet him. What a lovely young man he was. And he said, I'm happy to sign that. He said, because my mom and dad put in something at my house. And even if my best friend comes, they have to sign a hold harmless. He said, because they could be my best friend today and they could sue me tomorrow. <laughs> but, so a very nice young man. So he signed the hold harmless. And um, then I had to, I tracked down somebody uh, for to unlock the bathrooms because the rec club had forgotten. So we ended up finding someone in, in, uh, to give me the combination so I could unlock those. Um, and she had ended up having just like one vendor, but it seemed like there was quite a few people there helping out and decorating bikes. Um, I texted the police chief to make sure he was still on board and they did have the duty officer and he came out and did it. Um, it appears that we didn't receive any complaints, which I'm very happy about because our request that they abide by all the traffic laws was not um, followed. So I'm going to be crafting a letter saying, you know, if you do this next year, you know, I, I specifically said to abreast, this is what you have to do. And, and um, but so Kevin stayed and with the duty officer and they got him there and back safely. And it seems like they had quite a few participants and I think it was a really good event. It just needs to, to be a little more organized. So once I came down and got those things squared away, we were good to go. Um, let's see. Peter gave me a, a purchase order for Allstate Chloride. We did look at Gorham's, the same price from Gorham's. Um, and this is what he does. He just usually gets his, obviously it's delivered in smaller quantities, but he usually just writes the PO for his entire um, line, which is 22,000. It's like going to be over 27,000 gallons of chloride. So we were able to get two prices. Um, Forms are the same, but we have a good relationship with all state chloride, so that's why he went with them since the price was the same. Um, you do have a lock on that tank? Yes, that, that's the one that was gated. So they don't open it up and spill? Yeah, that happened in here. So I yeah. they actually installed a gate, chain link fence around yeah, or yeah. something. So. You need a motion to that? Um, um, yeah, probably, yeah. since it's over the purchase. Make a motion to purchase uh, chloride from Allstate. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Mm -hmm. aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Then the last one I had was just something peaker and... I'm not sure if we did it when Michelle started or not. 
Once upon a time, you guys had a top ten, and I think it was kind of the same stuff, so you kind of just put the kibosh to it because it was kind of over every year you guys would talk about your top ten, mm -hmm. and obviously it was things like, you know, the septic. Well, you know, that's, that's great. But, uh, you know, but I was curious if that was something that you wanted to give some thought to as far as um, goals. Like, for, is there things that you want to see worked on? Or I know, like, Pete Coffey speaks about uh, increasing the grand list. And I know some of you have talked about economic development. But I wasn't sure if there was, if that was a helpful tool to you when you did it. I mean, I think at one point, near the end, it kind of became rote because Obviously, I'd love a half million dollars to We did. We did end up way. crossing a bunch of stuff off of that list. Yeah, and I gave mm -hmm. you a list um, when I gave you my... Um, it might not hurt to throw it back out, you know, just come up with a list and show... Well, maybe if everybody takes their top two or three we, things... You know, that we you, can say to the public, we have mounted to something, or, you know, that's been on the list and we haven't really dealt with it. Or, yeah, maybe it's just you know, yeah. I think I think the septic list. doesn't need to be on the list because it's on the list. Right. It's, it's an ongoing thing. If there's yeah. grant money available, we apply for it for the septic. So I don't think that's... Yeah, it's just a matter of right now. It's, right. There's not. It's just bond and we can't afford more right. debt on the septic. So that's not... It's not that we're not pursuing it. It's right. just that the money's not available. So... Yeah, I guess I, it was one of the questions that someone... Um, when we were talking about, obviously, you know, hiring someone new, someone asked me uh, something uh, about the job and, and, and this and that. I said, look, you know, my job as town administrator, as I always say, is to push whatever rock uphill the select board chooses. And they're the ones who set the goals and the direction for the town, not me. I, you know, so I just thought maybe it'd be something to think about if everybody came up with, I don't know, one, two, three things and you could kind of... Well, it would be hard to get 10 if we all came up with one. Well, whatever. <laughs> I don't care how many you want. I don't know, you know. Or, or well, do you still have the list that, because I vaguely remember that, but do we I still mean, have I the gave, list that we have? Well, I gave you a list when I told you I was going to renew my contract, the status of the projects, and I think right. that stuff was in there. Mm. I think so. that was what was kind of making it up. But maybe you don't want to do that. I don't know. It was just a, it was just mm. a thought. So. Um, Joel brought up the idea of... of Doing the road trip at least once so that Ted and Pete knew where our problem areas were. Uh huh. Sure. Not that they don't. I mean, they drive around town too. I know they see things. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, thought we, you know, we, we hadn't done it in a few years. No, we uh, did it two years. Two, two years. years. Okay, because we did it one year. We did it my first year. We did it one, yeah, we haven't. And then we didn't do it last year, did we? We did uh, you know, last year course. or this year, we did the first two years I was on the board. Yeah, I was going to say. I remember it was done. Yeah, we did it a couple times. But I know the, um, well, you know the road form is against it. It drives them crazy. But just because <laughs> he said, they don't drive, they don't go to any other departments and do a tour and pick apart their work. <laughs> I said, well, they can. You know? So uh, uh, so anyways, we could have him. Yeah, that might be something the, the board might yeah. do with the new minister. Absolutely. So, hey. That way, well, you know, it might not That's, be a good idea to make a list and then we, when we do have a new administrator come on, at least then they'd know what we were talking about yeah. Opposed, yeah. as opposed to, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the upper notch. Well, I'm not, you know, yeah, I right. don't know what the slide is in the upper notch. I've right. never seen it. Absolutely. Um, no, I think that's a good point. So maybe you do that, Joel, and, and, and maybe that's one of your things is you say, you know, road trip or something, and we could certainly arrange it. So you're right. Something we can talk about, I guess, yeah. maybe later. Yeah, yeah no, it was just a thought. Be, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, um, that's it. That's all I have, and you have an executive session. Okay. <laughs> Michelle's like, you know, okay, Carl. Thank you. Sure, tell me you're the public officer we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Have a good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Motion to enter executive session to discuss the employment of a new town administrator, administrator and evaluations of of a public officer or officers or employee employees per 1 BSA section 313 subsection A subsection 3. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carried.